Good evening, all of you. Uh, this is Subhashi Dasgupta. Uh, once again, in front of you with a different uh, uh, session on R. And in this particular session, we are going to look at <coughs> um, the advanced capabilities of R. So this is the topic: advanced graphics in R. Okay. And uh, what we are going to uh, achieve uh, after <coughs> completing this particular session? Well. Uh, objective of the session, we are going to mainly explore ggplot2 library in R and uh, we are going to see that uh, how using a few things, uh, tweaking a few things actually, um, various different types of graphs can be uh, plotted and those are really good looking graphs. And uh, and the second part is uh, definitely um, we would like to do something. So we are going to plot a few uh, simple plots, but yeah, definitely good looking one using ggplot2. So this is what our objective and in the uh, agenda, I would say, uh, we're going to look at the qplot function in ggplot2 library. And this is one of the most important function. It is easy to use. Uh, only a few parameters are required to be you know, changed or it has to be tweaked and you will find different sorts of uh, nice looking graphs coming up. qqplot, then um, <clears throat> from qqplot, we'll move on to something called the ggplot, okay? And ggplot is something which is entirely based on the layer concept. So what is this layer? So we'll just quickly uh, go through this uh, layer part and uh, we'll see how to add those layers. <clears throat> then when I'm talking about the layers, uh, there are different geometrical objects available. It is uh, known as GEOM. So geometric actually it is. Like uh, I'm, I'm going to add a line, I'm going to add some um, so, so a different type of bar diagram, histogram, density. So those are all are geometric objects. Okay, so those are also going to be looked at. Not all, but a few. And then um, we are going to use various geometric uh, objects, and we'll put the, their concepts in place so that uh, at the end I get a good-looking graph. And then uh, at the end, if time permits, then. I'd like to show you a different type of bar diagram when uh, you are actually in a, um, uh, your objective rather, I would say. Your objective is to compare uh, two different scenarios, like say maybe uh, sales in 2016 uh, versus sales in 2017 in the same quarter, or maybe a performance of uh, two different um, classes in different uh, two different areas or whatever it may be. So generally it is for the binary uh, comparison. So that we try to create, uh, for that we, we are going to uh, create some kind of bar diagram, but obviously that would require some amount of time. And I'm telling you this session is going to be a little bit more heavily dependent on coding because as we are going to use ggplot, there are quite a lot of parameters which I need to uh, supply uh, the values that are required to be supplied, and because of that, the code might look a little bit more, uh, you know, a ferocious kind of thing. But uh, don't worry, uh, uh, as you practice it, uh, the things will be much more clear that how oh, okay, this is how uh, you should uh, work with ggplot. Okay, so this is how we are going to end our session at the end, right? So let's start our uh, session on ggplot2 and we call it advanced graphics. So I was telling you that, uh, yeah, uh, for my reference, I have put something over here so that in case, because there are so many different uh, parameters, if I just miss something, I, I can just go for a quick reference. Uh, this code and the previous code will be uh, given to you so that uh, you can uh, make some changes, play around with those codes and see how different things are happening. Okay, so our first objective is to work with ggplot2 so the first thing first library ggplot2 okay just in case it is not there in your system you have to install it and it has many dependencies so you know the moment you try to install it uh, many other libraries will also be uh, installed automatically okay so library ggplot2 it is done now uh, Let's have a quick look at this, something called the <coughs> qplot. Why qplot is called qplot? <laughs> it's the simple, it is quick. Uh, I mean, the quickly you can plot a very nice looking uh, graph, so it is called qplot. So let's try to 
plot something. And for that, uh, let's work with a little bit of uh, simpler data. Uh, R comes with many different libraries. So one of the, uh, I mean, the base library has data sets also. And uh, the data set that uh, we are going to use here is something called empty cars. So empty cars. You can see it is already there because um, it is not there in my global environment, but empty cars comes along with its own uh, base package. Okay, so empty cars is readily available. So suppose empty cars is something that, uh, but before that, okay, let's have a look at this empty cars. Okay, so view empty uh, cars. <coughs> So you can see there are um, some 32 entries over there and each row has been given a different name and the name is suggested by the particular, uh, you can say the brand, the sub brand rather. So different um, type of vehicles, their names are given and their uh, some characteristics are given, VSM, gear curve, etc, 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 so many different things are there. So let's try to find out what is <coughs> excuse me what is the uh, typical scatter plot for this empty car uh, with respect to this uh, i mean the mpg that is the miles per gallon with respect to displacement or horsepower now if we use a simple plot um, if i use a simple plot then what is happening i'll do something like this i'll say with uh, say empty cars I'm going to plot uh, say MPG with respect to sorry um, it is a HP with respect to MPG okay and I can give something like uh, say PCH equal to say 20 So this looks okay, it is a good uh, plot, but it can be made a little bit better by adding some colors and these and that. Uh, so, okay, um, if I have to do it using, I can do everything using this plot function because plot has many different uh, functionalities, various different parameters using which I can actually make this graph really good looking, but that would actually uh, tell me that, okay, you keep on adding different, different parameters. Okay? And Sometimes the parameters might not be properly optimized. Uh, Qplot actually does this thing automatically. So if I use Qplot, so Qplot. Now you see, just like your plot here also, it is expecting an x. It is also expecting a y. So, so for example, I'm just putting x equal to uh, my HP and uh, y equal to mpg. One good thing about this ggplot uh, library is that it always expects that your variables are coming from a data frame. That is why in most of the important functions, you will find that one data equal to parameter is always there. Or rather you can say it is the argument. So if I just supply now here data, so from where this uh, HP and MPG are going to come, so it is from MD cars. Okay, and now I'm plotting it. Now I don't know whether it is uh, really that much visible or not, but see, I'm not putting anything like PCH equal to 20 or anything else. Based on the available window, it is uh, trying to uh, accommodate all the possible uh, spaces, and then it is giving a kind of background at the uh, behind. I don't know whether it is visible or not, but it is. It is actually creating a background. Uh, for this particular graph and at the same time the plots are also much uh, better looking so if i just compare this with this the other one q plot this is looking much more better it is it is good looking so actually uh, the plots which are plotted using ggplot they are very much you can say report ready kind of uh, plots okay so you can directly put, uh, copy it, um, store it and use it in your uh, typical reports. <clears throat>